Hey guys, this is my Mastering the Art of Three Channel DJing. So if you watched my previous video on how I DJ, you'll know that I use three channels to mix my tunes and a fourth one to mix with loops and samples. I've been perfecting this technique for over 20 years, so I thought why not share it with the world? So in 2004, I was backpacking over in Australia, in Melbourne to be exact, and I had the pleasure of seeing Ben Sims, Chris Liebing, Jeff Mills, and Richie Houghton all within a couple months time frame. They all had a few things in common. One, that they were, and still are, some of the best techno DJs on the planet. And two, they all mix with three turntables. I think Jeff Mills might have had a 909, but it's been a really long time, and I can't remember that far back. But this changed the way I looked at DJing, and I looked at the music that I wanted to DJ. I was so inspired by this that when I got home to Canada, I bought a third turntable and started mixing vinyl with three decks. Eventually, everything went digital, and I was faced with the decision... Do I get some CDJs? I don't really have the money for them. Do I go to Serato or I, do I use Tractor? So I did quite a bit of research and I found out that Tractor is the one that allows you to mix with three or four channels and none of the other ones other than CDJs allow you to do that. So I went with Tractor and I picked up a controller called the Control S4. It's basically an all-in-one controller meant for Tractor that lets you mix on two decks, on three decks, or on four decks. Well, I should, I should say channels, but you get the idea. So I practiced on that S4 for probably about 10 years before I upgraded to a mixer and, an, uh, and a smaller controller that you see in my how-to video. I like mixing on three or four channels because of the creativity it adds to DJing. The type of music I like to play is techno that is mostly loop-based and groove-based, so it's less structured than, say, EDM or trance or even acid techno. There's way more creative freedom to craft your own sound by blending the frequencies together to create something unique. I'm not saying you can't play those genres with three or more channels. There's just different rules and more structure that you have to adhere to. The main benefit to having a third channel is track readiness. You don't even have to worry about mixing three tracks together when you're doing this. You just have to use the third deck as a tool to, ha to have the next track queued up for when the other two end. So if you like long layered mixes, you can literally have two tracks going at the same time for the majority of their runtime, and then you'll have your third channel queued up to mix at the beginning of that track while the other two are ending. You can also use the third channel to mix very quickly and do some fast mixing. So you can go mix one, mix two, and then you'll have the third one ready. And then once you've got that as the primary, you go back to channel A and use that and mix. And you can bang out quite a few tracks if you do it this way. And all the while not even mixing three tracks at once. This is kind of the mentality you want to have when you're starting out. Uh, not to worry about mixing them at the same time. You just want to kind of train your brain to having that extra channel there. So you're able to not get overwhelmed, so you'll eventually be able to make the move to mixing on three channels without being overwhelmed. The first one is to know your tracks really, really well, which also happens to be one of the main fundamentals of DJing as a whole. But when you're mixing with three channels, this becomes way more important because you're going to have less time to figure out which track goes with, with, which the, with the other track because you're going to have a lot more to think about and to worry about. And taking a lot of time to find that track that you want to mix is just going to make things a little bit more complicated. So be ready. The second one is balancing the frequencies using equalization. Having an ear for EQ frequencies and EQing properly is key to mixing well with three channels or more. If you're going to attempt to have three tracks going at the same time, you must respect the frequency of your mix and balance them appropriately. If you don't do this, then you'll end up with your mix sounding money or too busy. Generally, you should always devote one of your channel EQ bands to zero decibels. That's 12 o'clock. So if you have track A with a base of zero decibels, the other two channels should generally be cut all the way. With the mids, they're a little bit more forgiving than the bass. You don't have to cut them completely, but generally you should have one of the tracks at zero decibels while the other two kind of compete for the secondary mid. And for the highs, they're even more forgiving than the mids. Sometimes you can have two highs at zero decibels while the other one is in the background. Um, you kind of have to use your ears to figure this out, and it's a track, It's on a track-by-track track basis. So when you decide to mix three tracks at once, it's important to remember that you aren't just mixing the primary track with the secondary track and the tertiary track. You're actually mixing the primary track with the secondary, and you're mixing the secondary with the tertiary. So the stuff that happens in the foreground is actually just as important as the mixing that happens in the background. And the third one is proper phrasing. This is tied into part one 
knowing your tracks. But cue points and loops can go a long way. You don't want to leave two tracks with busy melodies clashing or have a groove that doesn't match with the other groove and it's at the peak. You don't want to have those clashing. So using loops can go a long way where you can loop the second or third track and just keep part of it playing until the busyness is over and you don't have to risk having two of the, the busy parts of the track overlapping each other. The fourth one is knowing when not to mix on three channels or even two channels. When to let the track just play. This is very important. Sometimes some tracks don't work being layered or mixed quickly. Sometimes you just have to let it play. This actually may, took me a long time to realize. I was so caught up in the, look at me, I'm playing on three tracks, three, three decks, look what I can do, that I kind of forgot that, you know, the most important part is the audience, and the most important part is making sure that you have something danceable. Not everybody is even going to realize that you're mixing on three channels. And that's actually the goal. You don't want people to know that you're mixing on three decks. You want to make it sound seamless. So you have to use the fundamentals there to make that work. The fifth one is knowing when to break the rules. I wish I had some more advice on this, but breaking the rules when it comes to EQing or phrasing is a track by track decision. And it's just something your ears will kind of have to decide for you. So that comes with practice. I'm sure some of you are expecting a sixth, which is beat matching. Obviously, if you're playing vinyl on three decks, you better be awesome at beat matching because you just don't want to have to focus on correcting your track and spending a lot, a lot of time locking in those tempos. You want to be, you want to, you want to have this mastered, and that takes a while. But we are in 2024. Things have been digital for a long time, and there's a sync button. I'm not going to judge you if you use the sync button. As a matter of fact, I've been using sync for about 10 years now, and it's only made my DJing better. The audience doesn't know that you're using sync. The only people who are gonna judge you are those old school vinyl DJs who have something to prove. So just let go of your beat matching ego. Sync it if you want to. Um, it saves a lot of room for creativity and it'll actually help you learn a lot more about EQing if you do this. If you wanna do it when you beat match, all the power to you. So those are the five fundamentals of mixing on three channels. If you want to see uh, mixing on three channels in action, you can check out my YouTube channel. I've got lots of mixes there where I've got the overhead view of me mixing. Um, or you can check my other video out, and I'm going to have quite a few more out in the future. Thank you.